Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. Uh, thank God you made it through another week. And uh, this has been a great week so far. I hope you're having a great week. And you know, I came down here today, I said, we got a great episode planned, but then I realized I say that just about <laughs> for every episode. So, but I really do. Um, today we're going to do some of the, uh, the some of the viewers, we're going to sent in some gifts, some wonderful gifts, and I just want to go through that real quick, and then from there, we will see what's going on. So let's get to that real fast. Now, our first item comes from a good friend of mine by the name of Bob Gunter over at Gunter's Garage, and Bob and I were talking uh, over a month ago about this, and he said, I want to send you this cool item, and it is definitely, first of all, anything that comes in a leather case has the cool factor increased. So look at this. Have you ever seen anything like this before? It looks like almost like a little telescope here. It's got you know, a lens on one side. It's got a level on top. And if you look through here, you could see, let me see if I could do this here. Uh, yeah, you could see the level in there. And what you do is you hold it this way, okay, with that level going uh, vertically. And when you get that bubble to go in there, uh, this is called a hand level or lock level. And let me show you how this works. Very now, this hand or lock level is used by uh, uh, landscapers, surveyors, things like that. And because basically what a lot of people don't understand is that, you know, uh, a lot of items around us like trees and grass and things like that grow vertically. So that throws off your perception when you're looking because a lot of times you'll think you're on level ground and there could be a slope. And if that slope is a, a gradual slope, it's it's almost ex uh, impossible to tell. Some guys are good at it, but me, I'm horrible at it. And I didn't know how horrible I was, and so I started playing around with this. <laughs> I can't, I can't tell anything. But uh, I even found out when they were putting the fence in in front of the house that how off grade my. But that's good for drainage. But by the other token, you know, you have problems. So let me show you how this. Now works. this is so simple in design, yet it's still used today and still sold today. Now basically, what you would do is you would take. Uh, one way to do it is to take a, a pole or a, uh, some kind of a known distance. So let's say this was 50 inches here in length, and you would put your little sight level on top. Now you could do it if you stand up straight and you knew the height to your eyeball. But uh, let's say this is 50 inches high, you put this on here and you would look through, and you have a leveling staff down, let's say, uh, 100 feet away. And there'd be numbers on here, you know. So let's say you were looking through here and you saw that that bubble leveled out and it said 50. Well, then you would know this is perfectly level. If this said 52, that meant there would be a 2-inch uh, height difference. So that means that this side would be lower by 2 inches, a 2-inch drop. And uh, obviously, if it said uh, 48, it would mean that you had a two inch rise. So that's how you, you, you use this. And I shot some footage before to see what it looks like when you're looking through here. And you could see, you know, how that bubble comes up. And it, it, uh, it's very easy to use and uh, really a well made. You know, unit. I never realized how bad I was at judging grade until I started playing with this thing. But it's really interesting. And Bob, thanks so much for that. Uh, next up, let's check out what okay, we next got next. Next up, my buddy Al Manzoli from uh, Quebec, Canada, uh, uh, another Canadian. And uh, Al had sent in these, a couple great things. First of all, this is a, a sharpening stone. And you can see here the shape of this is, you know, and a lot of these sharpening stones are great for getting into uh, different areas. And we're going to try and uh, cover some sharpening things. But again, a leather case, right? Anything in a leather case is, is cool. Uh, next up, he sent the screwdriver. Now, I thought it was unnamed at first, but I, I looked real close and I see it. I think it says Champion. Does that say Champion on there? And then uh, where over here, where it should say Made In or something. I can't see. I see Made, I think. Very hard to see. I've been looking with the microscope, but I think that says Champion. Anyway, you know how I like the square shanked green screwdriver, so that's always great. But this actually was my favorite. This is here. It's a tin. You could see that uh, back then... And they used to come, cotter pins would come in here. And uh, and it had a retaining pin that you could turn it and it would lock in so it wouldn't just pop off, which is, I think, is great. Whenever you have, see, when you lock that in, it can't come out now. But this was a Campbell cotter pins, patent 1912. And it shows you here about uh, how to use a cotter pin and how to take it out. How cool is that? I love these old time tins, but that is just really... 
really nice. Al, thank you so much. Okay, next up, my good friends Mark and Jenny K. McKenzie from Colorado sent these books over. Mark had a beautiful shop he just did, but he keeps getting struck down with medical conditions. And But he's tough as nails. He bounces back, but every time he's about to start something, he gets hit. And uh, so we're waiting to see what he does with his brand new lathe that he got in his shop that's so nice. So I can't wait to see that. But he was cleaning up a different room and he sent in these two books that he said uh, I thought I would like. And these are really nice books. And, and what's good about these is they're dated. This one's from 2009. This one's from 91. And the reason that's good is because you can't go by the prices of these price, anything that has these price values on it. Because a lot of times they're inflated and whatnot. So I'll give you an example of what I mean. They have such beautiful tools in here. And, and this one, hey, has great photographs and things like that. But when you look at some of the tools like this, you know, they had a boxwood ruler I just saw. Um, you know, we all pick those here. We pick these up all the time. You know, look at it. It says uh, $742, you know. I know it might be a specifically... You know, it's a, it's a uh, it's a Stanley, whatever. But we come across different ones. This one here, nine hundred and ninety for this one here. But you know, we, the prices you can't go by these because the last thing you want to do is look at these books and then go on eBay and think that you're you're getting a deal. Uh, eBay is usually where you find out what things go for because a lot of times if they sell for that price, that's what they're going for, literally. But uh, this, like I said, two thousand nine. You could see planes were big at the time and the prices were showing. And, uh, but that varies, you know, but I just love all the different and unusual tools. We all like the unusual tools, right? So very cool book. This one here from 91 doesn't have photographs, but they have the drawings, but they have a lot more different type of tools in here, which is really, and all the unusual ones that I really enjoy. And the price is over here, even though it's from 91, this is very close to what they go for now. You know, spoke shaves, you see, normally 16 to $20. That's, that's right on the money, you know? So <laughs> even though this book is, is 20 years old, it's, uh, it's as, you know, close to now, but I love all the unusual tools and hand tools they have. So, uh, this is, this is really, I, I've been looking through this for a while. I really enjoy this. And uh, I, I really appreciate it. I love the knives, you know, especially since they have all different brands. Anyway, Mark, thanks so much. These are, this is really great. I've been looking through this for a long time already. Okay, our next item come from a good friend of the show, Aaron Bowles from Houston, Texas. God bless Texas. And you know how I love Texas, right? <laughs> In fact, I had somebody ask me a while back. They say, you know, you, you keep saying, why, why do you love Texas? They were, I think they were baiting me. Because they were afraid I was going to say that, you know, Texas isn't woke and they're not playing the games and they're, they're doing what the state wants to do instead of going along with a program that don't work. But I didn't do that. I just said, I love Texas because uh, I'm a born again Texan. Anyway, so uh, here we go. Let's see what, what uh, Aaron sent over. And you know what this is here? This is a, uh, a little jack. It's a mini jack that you use when you're working on the, uh, the milling machine or jack. And you have to level out something. You put this on here. And uh, this one here is it's a beautiful example. And uh, it's, it's not beat up or anything. And just really nice. Uh, next up, a little offset wrench. And uh, this one here. I wonder what this is. From Brooklyn, New York. It's from the H... H. Smith Incorporated. Can you see that? Is that H. H. Smith? You can see better than me. Brooklyn, New York. And uh, it's, it's 560. I wonder what this is like. It was a bicycle wrench or part of a kit. There's a, a wrench you don't see too often. Offset. And, uh, and yet it comes with, you know, this small little thing with a big head. Very interesting. Um, nice pair of new old stock. NOS. Dymaloy and uh, you know Dymaloy makes fantastic tools and look at this here these are tile nippers and you can tell tile nippers because the tips don't come together they have to be extremely hard they're not super sharp because they they just have to be really hard to nip the tile so you know guys used to and they have to stop here to keep it from from uh, dulling out the tip if they touch so you don't see these what's it's interesting whenever you see new old stock I'm always interested because I love how you could look at the box and see what was written on the box and, you know, the way it was. So this is a, a nice little collectible. Uh, next up, he had a, a, this must have been like a machinist made, to me it looks like, out of a, a piece of bar stock or some kind of steel. Uh, it's just mi maybe a, missing a little plunger action there, but uh, very easy to uh, to fix and 
very interesting, right? Little uh, clamp. Uh, here, you know how I love my uh, my clippers here, my garden shears. But what's interesting about that, and I always like this type of spring. These, these type of springs, you could still get them today, but they do clean up really nice. But they're always very smooth. And, and this one here is not beat up. The edge is all in good shape, you could see. Um, the thing is here with this one is... And he, and it's funny because Aaron included this. You see this here? This is what this mechanism is supposed to look like. Now, what you do, this nut has a, a bunch of stars around it. So when you tighten it, you loosen, this thing gets loosened and tightened, and it moves that lever over so that it cannot loosen up. This way, you don't peen over the bolt. You see, it's like a lock nut. This whole mechanism is just a lock nut, so you don't have to peen over the bolt, which was a great thing if you wanted to sharpen or whatever. Now, apparently the guy lost that, or somebody made this homemade. You know, he, he just made a kind of a, a makeshift one out of, looks like brass. And you know what? It works. You know, it's uh, nothing against it. But uh, we'll see if we can not fix that up to make it look like, if you can't find one of those nuts, you have to make one. We could do that. Uh, very interesting. We'll get working on this. And then last up, Aaron sent this HEB that green sauce. Uh, and you can see it's medium heat, two stars, which is probably very hot for me. But <laughs> you know what's so funny? A lot of people, and it says warning can be addictive. And you know it's true when you start using hot sauce or anything like that on on food and spices it does get addictive because after a while the regular just like salt pepper even them they can get addictive uh but i i wonder what this is like i wonder if it's very hot and anybody else hear of this from texas i wonder if this is like i've never seen this uh, green type i always see the red hot sauce but aaron thanks so much all great next stuff. up our good friend dean collins we all know dean dean has uh, been a long time spy. in fact dean that flag that you see me so proud of dean sent that over to me you know that beautiful embroidered flag dean collins from the root six the heart of route 66 uh, automobile museum over in oklahoma uh dean sent these beautiful look at this embroidered not one but two shop aprons and uh, look how nice that is, huh? Scalcraft in the Scalcraft of Red. There's actually 40 different shades of red, minimum. And uh, you could see how close this is to the Scalcraft of Red. It just matches perfect. And uh, I will be, uh, this is just so nice. This is the kind of thing you wear out like to a, a wedding or something. <laughs> it's just so pretty. And uh, But they're really nice, soft, and they got the, the band that doesn't d dig into your neck like the one that I usually wear. So, uh, Dean, thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm going to wear these and, and really enjoy them. Okay, last up, and I only say last up because I only got this package about two days ago. So, uh, I get it. I, I was talking in the order I received these. This one comes from a good friend from Sweden by the name of Marcus Shard. Marcus, uh, unbelievable, the stuff he sent. First of all, he before he, he sent me a bunch of tools from his father-in-law that passed away. And uh, we're going to take extra special care of them. But before we get to the tools, he wanted to give us all a taste of Sweden. And, and, and that's so great about that. First of all, he sent a, a Swedish flag pin. So you can see that's what the flag looks like. Um, and he sent the CD. Just This was really big. This is like almost like country western music. But it's all in uh, his, his language. It's, uh, and it's amazing because it, if you listen, except for not understanding what they're saying, it all sounds very similar to a like 70s, 60s, 70s uh, country western. It was very enjoyable, but like I said, I don't know what they were saying. This here is a, a horse. He says you'll find this in just about every Swedish home, and they're only made uh, in two manufacturers uh, in, the, in the country. And... Um, they're in Dales or Delarna, and they've been there since the 17th century. So uh, these are what you'll see all over. I guess it's like the Russian lacquer boxes, you know, similar to those and stuff. Everybody has, you know, the Russian nesting dolls or anything, but very interesting. So, and then he sent some food. Let me First show you. He that. said something called Ren Snacks. <clears throat> now, these are uh, reindeer jerky, and uh, which is pretty interesting because, and they're expensive, but. Um, the reindeer is handled and managed by in uh, the northernmost part of Sweden, uh, around the Arctic Circle, by the indigenous people, and they're called Sami, those people. And uh, but the, this is something that 
<laughs> Very unusual. You don't see that down here in, in New York. And we see just about everything. Then he says, and am I pronouncing this right? Is that Fika? Swedish Fika? But this is <clears throat> traditional Swedish... Uh, Pastry. Now, this is a, a traditional uh, sweet, they call this coffee bread, and it's uh, a traditional Swedish food. In fact, they call this little guy here called a vacuum cleaner, uh, <laughs> that size. Here you can see the Swedish vacuum cleaner, because it was shaped like the old vacuum cleaners. And I've tried both of these, and they were both excellent. And they're very rich, so you know, you don't need a big piece to, uh, to really be satisfied. You can see what they look like here. You know, they all come in. It was very good. And uh, so that's, uh, I think it's fight. Next up, he sent a assortment of Scandinavian candy. And this is all salty licorice. Now, if you've never had, well, I'm a licorice fan. I love licorice, but I've never had salty licorice. And he was laughing because this licorice is flavored with alone, um, ammonium chloride. <laughs> he says, I assure you, this isn't a joke. He says uh, they love it over there in Sweden. He says, but most of the world don't like it. And there are three different times here. This one, um, let's see, this one here, the Turkish one, is uh, called like a Turkish pepper. Kind of, you can see here, three three hot. That's making me, I'm telling you, I'm nervous just looking at it. Uh, this one here is uh, is called the, the Cause Salty Licorice. I guess this one here would be the easiest one for me to try. And this one here is called the Witch's Howl. So, um... I don't know. I don't know. I can. I, I don't know which one to try first, but I'll tell you one thing. I, I wouldn't try it right now because I'm afraid uh, <laughs> I got to try this like in the afternoon when I got time if it's too hot. You know, but isn't that cool? I never. Anybody out there ever try salty? Okay, liquid? and here are the tools from uh, Marcus's late father in law, which I, I think is fantastic. They're a lot of them are Baco. And now I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think Ben might collect Baco. But uh, you can see here, made in Sweden, Baco. And, you know, of course, the green handled. Look at these. They, they, Baco made such a beautiful green. Really did. And uh, these should clean up nice. And look at them, huh? Tips. Look at the tips. They're begging for some reprofiling. So this will be a nice project. Then he sent an assortment of adjustable wrenches. This one here... Very interesting because it's, uh, although I have, and remember, they're backwards. <laughs> they're left-handed wrenches. So see, there they go. See, when you push up with your left hand and you, they, when you push up, it closes. That's why it's lefty. Anyway, uh, Baco 31. Uh, this one's in beautiful shape and it's got that hole. I've never seen one with that hole in it. I don't even know if that's a hanging hole or whatever. And this is nice. A lot of these came with the Volvo car kits, but I don't think the ones with the holes did. Anyway, there's a uh, uh, there's a couple of Baco here, and there's a couple Bilnas. Bilnas, uh, well, I'll have more information on this company here. But he said it might have been from uh, Finland, maybe. But we'll check it out, and I'm sure I'm sure my buddy Ben knows because he knows about all that. But look at all of these, and you know how I love tools that have been painted because the paint protects them and rightly so look <clears throat> they're painted this one's frozen right it can't move but the paint you can see here there's no you know it, it protects it from from rust and things like that that's why i love painted tools now if you're going to strip this paint off here i'll tell you right now you got to get you look for what they call marine stripper because you need to stuff with the heavy chemicals. Otherwise, this stuff will sit in there for a week if you put that in, you know, the citrus stuff. So you got to look for like marine stripper. And look at this. These Bacos, you know, these wrenches actually perform. They still use these. They're, they were well designed. This is one of the first wrenches designed. Uh, adjustable wrenches designed. So we'll get to those uh, to pay tribute. And the best part about this is my buddy Ben, who has such beautiful collection of Bacos. You know, he don't want to you know, mess with them because they're collectibles. But these, we can do them up nice. And I think, let me ask you a question. Polished with Baco orange in the inside? I mean, that's just begging for that. I love that offset. So, Marcus, uh, thanks so much for giving us uh, a taste of Sweden, literally. And I want to thank everybody for sending uh, what you did. And thank you so much. That's very generous of you, and I really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sorry this video ran so long. We're at 20 minutes already. It just flies, doesn't it? Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.